Hi, welcome back to Arise Boyx, the getting started with rendering and shading in Mantra workshop. And this is chapter 11, where we will talk about car paint shader, Fresnel utility to generate our masks. And finally, I will show you how to create a frosted glass material effect. So let's get started. Let's talk first about Fresnel and car paint. As you can see, I have the environment lights, which is the basic uh, Linong HDRI from the default setup of the Houdini, th this one. I have the grid objects, which is, has the uniform scale of 10, and I have some, a bunch of random geometry that I created out of lofted lines, just to represent sort of like uh, the curvature of some car designs and, you know, kind of looks like something um, it's almost like a part of the car. So, if you go to material palettes, you can see that there is no such thing as a car shader. If you try to search a filter with a car, there is nothing. So, we go to the material, and press tab, start typing car, and there you go. Car paint shader core. So, I drag and drop it here, go to the render, and let's see what we got. Now, right over the bat, we will see basically what represents the kind of metallic car paint shader, which actually looks pretty cool and, you know, works well. Basically, you can tweak the color. As you can see, uh, the reflectivity of the, um, of the, um, of the diffuse, uh, you can make it better to make it uh, more prominent, you know, something, something around 0 0.2, 0 0.3 works really well. Uh, the roughness of the uh, car paints under the coat. Uh, the flakes, by the way, this is kind of an interesting part. So I'll just zoom in to the flakes so we see them a bit better. And I'll isolate this part so we don't compute stuff that we don't need. So as you can see, those little things are uh, indeed the flakes. And they work kind of well, but the frequency is not enough. So I'll just let's say 10,000 and 10,000 should provide us with much more flakes. Now, obviously uh, we don't see much because it's a bit too noisy. So as we already know, we go to the out and increase the pixel samples so we can see the flakes a bit better. Mm, let me see. Maybe if we go and increase the size of the flakes, we will see them better. Oh, for some reason, I don't, I don't see the flakes. This is, um, this is rather weird. Maybe the frequency we can decrease it. Okay. Apparently there were so many flakes, um, that we did not see things that were not non flakes. If you, if you know what I mean. Um, yeah, so. There you go. This is the, I mean, there is kind of nothing really to talk about. It, it's, it's not a super interesting shader. It just does what it does. It does what it says, right? But the interesting part actually is when we are adding the Fresnel. So Fresnel is another shading utility. You can find it here. And what it does, as you can see, the, the icon kind of, actually works really well showcasing what it does. It isolates the geometry that is facing, normals are facing um, from the camera. So the normals that are facing to the camera, they're, they're going to be uh, painted, uh, masked with the black. The normals that are looking exactly 90 degrees from camera, they will be white. So if we drag and drop, Mm, oops, essentially, <laughs> somehow I forgot to start the render. My bad. So if we drag and drop, this looks really weird. So uh, what I'm going to do is create a null, drag and drop null, and uh, connect the KT to the null. So this KT thing that says transmitted, refracted light, uh, that generates the needed Fresnel. So if we tweak the index of refraction to the right, or 
uh, for better isolation to the left. So what you can see is that we cannot tweak this slider lower than 0.1, but we can actually go and make it lower. So just like that. And as you can see, this creates a mask. So what that mask can do is, I'll actually um, tweak the camera a bit so we see the results a bit better, hopefully. Okay, what this mask can do for us is if I press tab, start typing ramp B, which for, as you already know, ramp parameter, I connect this KT to the inputs. By the way, if you want, you can just uh, skip the null. I created the null just so I can drag and drop it onto our shader, um, onto our viewport. And now we, if I connect the ramp to, um, actually, I'll show you another node that is called mix color. Uh, Color mix, mix color, you get the point. Uh, so as you already see this bias amount, you might already have guessed that we are going to pipe our ramp into the bias. And let's see if that works. Okay. So as you can see, everything here looks like this uh, really, really bright pink. It's a bit too much to my eyes, actually. So let's... Let's make it something like this. Okay, so we are only seeing the colors that are being controlled by our ramp. And if you have seen how this ramp is generated, the white is really in the low. So we can grab the white and increase the amount. So we are indeed getting other color mix. Actually, let's make it, hmm, let's make it this color or maybe pink-ish. Mm, this kind of works. This looks kind of okay. All right, so as you might have already guessed, we will just now connect the color mix to our car paint shader. And that will drive our color and we will have a, a color shader, a car paint shader that changes the color depending on the angle that you're looking at. So, you know, like uh, some really kind of cool, trendy cars are doing that with their paints. So there you go, that's Fresnel. Again, you can tweak the Fresnel from, let's say here. Uh, you can then change the ramp and basically you start with just tweaking the Fresnel 0.002 works okay, maybe 0.005, even better, who knows. And then you ramp it, then you get it to the color mix. If you wanna, if you don't wanna use the ramp, if the color mix makes more sense for you, of course, um, to each their own, right? Okay, uh, next quick, uh, quick thing um, I really wanted to show you, I think would be actually, I am so lazy that I'll just extrude this one. Um, poly, oops, poly, poly extrude. Uh, distance something. No, this is too much. Let's say 0 0.1. Uh, output the back. Okay. And uh, this will be our glass. So we will try to create a frosted glass. I will delete everything that we have here, create a new principal shader, and drag and drop the principal shader and make the transparency like 9993. And let's see what we have so far. Well, it should basically look like a glass material. Nothing fancy, nothing special. Uh, what I want to do, basically, uh, I think I will turn off the grid objects, but I will enable um, render light geometry in the environment light, so we can see what's happening. And as you can see, it's currently it looks a bit kind of weird. Why? Because we have the roughness value too high. So to make it more like, uh, look more like glass, I think, 
let's look at this like that. Okay, yeah, this is better. So, a couple of things uh, for you to keep in mind. Rendering glass in Mantra is very not fast, to put it mildly. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it takes a lot of time and it's actually noisy as well. So, it will take um, samples as well. So, you know, more samples, more time, you get how it works, right? Anyway, so I'll go back to our material. I press down the tab, start typing rest position as we already know because I'm gonna I'm gonna drive the frostiness of the glass as per usual using the noise because we can, right? So I get to the rest position, pipe into position as per usual. Nothing new here. If you're not sure what's happening, go back and watch the the noise uh, chapter. Next, again, RAM. Uh, let's call it ramp 2, just to be safe. So noise gets into the inputs, ramp output gets into the roughness. And right off the bat, I think we will have the desired result, except for the fact that we will have to tweak our roughness values through the ramp. Let's, let's uh, give it a couple of seconds to resolve. Um... Let's actually preview the turbulent noise first. I'm not sure how it looks. Yeah, this looks a bit like too much. Uh, let's see, turbulence. Mm -hmm. um, I think this looks kind of okay. I don't know. Let, let me know what you think, right? <laughs> because maybe I am doing something wrong. I don't know. Okay. Anyway, let's uh, let's convert everything that was white into 0.4 roughness and everything that was black here, let's leave it at zero. Should be good. And if I now drag and drop the principal shader, we should see our frosted glass effects. Maybe if I were to re-enable grids and make the grid I don't know look like something maybe concrete bricks Let, let's let's bring bricks um, by the way the default bricks they come with the displacement so it will take another huge amount of time and uh, to make these bricks work we have to have UVs so I'll go and create UV project I think will work just fine uh, scale Let's see. Whoops. Uh, by the way, um, as you can see, there is some sort of Houdini console thing. It's because I did not stop the render first uh, before we started to tweak our geometry. So we did not evaluate. But now if I press the render, it will work just fine. Give it a couple of seconds to see what's what. All right, so as you can see, we start having some results. Hmm, I'm thinking that 0.4 roughness might have been a bit too much, but it actually helps to illustrate the point, right? So if I increase the turbulence, uh, maybe increase the roughness a bit more, but decrease the maximum roughness in our ramp, I think it could yield a bit better result. Yeah. Already it looks a bit better. So it has this frosted effect, which in my opinion looks really cool. Again, problem is that it takes a bit of time, but what can you do, right? Apart from the fact that you can buy a thousand of CPUs, <laughs> create your own render farm and problem solved, right? So there we go. Uh, this was pretty much everything that you need to get started with. Car paints, um, Fresnel. By the way, you can use Fresnel in other scenarios, like like we discussed. By the way, I'm gonna stop. While this is rendering, I'm gonna just remind you that previously we had a problem. I told you about the sheen that comes default with principal shader. The sheen is kind of problematic. 
but what it does, it makes the normals that look outwards of the of the camera, uh, it looks them lighter. So basically, it kind of does the same thing as does the Fresnel, but it's much more noisy. So using the Fresnel, you can mask, um, add lightness to your base color using the Fresnel instead of using the Shin. And ironically, or maybe it's not ironic, I don't know, um, it will be more, I mean, uh, it will be more clear and it will be more controllable and it will be, I'm not sure about the speed, maybe it will not be faster, but this is my preferred way of doing the kind of um, fuzz from, let's say, um, uh, rendering like clothes and stuff. Uh, this is a trick I get, I took from uh, render, I mean, uh, real time rendering, because usually this fuzz is getting faked by the Fresnel in the real time rendering. So, you know, I'm doing the same in the offline rendering and it works and it's um, more controllable than the sheen that comes with Mantra. Okay, so our frosted glass has finished rendering. Uh, you can see the results. Basically, the noise controls everything. Change the noise, get different pattern. And basically, the only limit is your imagination at this point because um, yeah, we discussed the noises and everything else, so there you go. If you like the video, hit the like button. If you don't want to miss anything else that we have in the making, hit the subscribe button. If you have ideas, suggestions, just questions, don't forget to use the comment section below. I'll try to read everything, respond if needed. Hopefully you have a nice day and see you later.